Morning guys and gals, Froggy here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to um, troubleshoot and hopefully to repair problem with the um, starting ignition. I'm having trouble starting this car. I know the battery's good. I've got two sets of keys here. Um, this car is a uh, built in July of 1995 and all the BMWs from January of 1995 the E36's have a chip in the key and the chip is read by a sensor ring, an antenna ring that goes around the ignition um, thinking that might be what the problem is, uh, so I'm going to pull this panel off to get to that, uh, it's called an EWS ring. Uh, but first let me show you what the issue is. Uh, it's, it's a non-start issue. It's intermittent because it starts once in a while, but it doesn't start every time. It's not battery because uh, battery's okay. Here's turning the ignition key on, twisting it to start. I try it the other way, I flip it, turn it, try to start it. So maybe that key's bad or the chip inside is bad, so I try my second key, nothing, and I'll flip it and nothing. So uh, I think it's um, something to do with security. And the car started yesterday okay, but it was an intermittent problem where you put the key in one time and it would start, and then you try it ten minutes later and it wouldn't start. Um, this is not the spinning ignition uh, tumbler problem, which is a different problem. So that problem has been covered quite a lot on the Internet. I may do... Uh, video on that if it ever happens to this car, but it's not that problem. So now I'm going to pull a panel and try to get to this uh, EWS uh, antenna. Okay, let me get caught up a little bit here. I have taken out this panel, which fits underneath uh, where your knees where your knees hit. Uh, lower instrument panel. Uh, three screws. There's one there, one there, those two are up front, and then there's one you got to reach down underneath where your right leg would be, right there. Okay, so three screws, and then it has a clip there. You have to be careful fitting those uh, slots around the brake and the clutch pedal, and on this side, uh, well, this that little tab slides inside the console, the console panel. So it's kind of a, you know, you got to work it a little bit to get this panel in and out, but it all kind of makes sense in the end. After that panel, this piece of trim fits underneath your ignition switch area and underneath your steering wheel column. Uh, to get it out, there's one, I think it's a security screw, I think it's a special security screw, but I used a um, small Phillips to get it out. Probably wasn't the right tool, but I got it out. It's just a little black screw. And then there are two clips. There one clip on the right hand side and one clip on the left right there. Those are just plastic clips that fit into the top half of this. Now here's here's the good news. When I got this all off <coughs> excuse me grunting as I get in. When I got this all off the antenna is underneath here. The antenna, the EWS antenna, is under here. And there are two wires, two green wires that come off. 
I'm going to put this into close up. All right, this is from the other side. This is from outside the car. You see those right there shining on it? See those two green wires? Green wires go to a plastic circle piece that fits around the ignition tumbler and then they go back this way and they plug in to a module. I'm going to have to uh, cut that wire bundle and find the module. Now what happened, I tried the key and I just jiggled these wires a little bit and it started. That's a good thing. I think that's the whole problem. They look like very flimsy wires and they are got 150,000 miles on them. They've been bouncing and the car's been hot and cold and whatever. I think some wire is broken inside there. If not broken, it's very um, a very bad connection. So I'm going to take this EW, it's called EWS antenna. I'm going to take that off next. Okay, uh, getting you guys up to date. Uh, I needed to order a part. This is an EWS antenna. The antenna is in this little ring that goes around the uh, ignition tumbler. And your key has a chip. The antenna reads the chip and the key. This transmits. It plugs in underneath your dash to a thing called the transmitter. Then it goes over to another module that's near your um, your uh, glove box, and uh, it's part of security, so the car can't be stolen. Anyway, I'm pretty sure there's there's a broken wire in here. I might play around with it and try and test it, but I ordered a part. So I'll pick up this uh, this video uh, tomorrow when I get the part. Okay, so see you later. Okay, Froggy's back. I am uh, putting in the new AWS. It just snaps on over the ignition uh, tumbler. And I'm going to use some tie plastic tie wraps to tie it up right next to uh, the bundle that already goes around there and then uh, plug it into the transmitter uh, which I showed you the other day. Okay, see if I can give you a little close-up of where I plugged it in. It's, it's that black box right there. It has two wires, uh, two wire bundles attached to it. A white wire, a white terminal at the end of a small bundle and uh, a black terminal and the black one is the one I just plugged in it's got two green wires which uh, are the same green wires that go around the the tumbler, the ignition tumbler so I've got it plugged in I took a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, let me show you right, I took a pair of needle nose like this They're you know, nice long ones, straight, straight end needle nose. And I didn't grab it on the plastic, I grabbed it on the wires underneath, very gently. And then I was able to push up and twist it a little bit. And it's got a little click. You can, you probably can't see it, but uh, there's a little snap, a little spot there that, that has a snap on it just a really tiny thing and if you hear it snap then it's in you don't need a lot of pressure okay don't be a gorilla you don't need a lot of pressure just stick it up there snap it in now I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to put the uh, uh, car battery connection back and I'm going to try and start it see what happens froggy back and this is a few days later and uh, much further into this uh, project uh, in the beginning, I said it was a non-starting problem. Actually, it was a non-cranking problem. There's a difference there. And, um, I won't get into the difference, but this is a non-crank, or is an intermittent non-crank that went to a permanent non-crank. Anyway, I hope you can see this, this diagram. It's a pretty good one. There's a lot to the EWS security system. Starts with a chip and the key. When you turn the ignition on, 
there's an electrical um, stimulation that comes into this antenna that reads the chip in the key if everything's working correctly transmits by radio from this module that the antenna plugs into over to the EWS control module. EWS control module sends a query to the DME, that's like the engine control unit, the DME and says does this key match this VIN number on this car? In other words, is this the right key or is somebody trying to steal the car? If DME says yes, then the EWS controller allows the fuel pump and the starter to um, start the car. I think my problem is either in this, well, I think the problem is, is in this, or it could be a bad chip in the key. But I've got two keys, and I don't think two keys would go bad at the same time, so I think the problem's in here. Now, BMW wants a ton of money. They want $150 just to diagnose it, and then they start piling on after that. I don't know what this costs. I don't know what a DME costs. Keys cost about 80 bucks. Uh, you can't get any of this stuff from anybody except BMW, so I'm trying to bypass the EWS system. That'll leave the car a little less secure, but it'll save me, you know, anywhere from 500 to a couple of thousand dollars to get this thing running. So what I've done, let me go around and I'll show you. Here's the actual EWS in the car. Right there, it's a, it's a black box that sits back in a little case. This is where you plug into it. This is the plug. Um, the wires go to the DME, uh, maybe to the starter, um, a bunch of different places. I, I'm not sure, but this is the EWS plug, and this is the EWS unit back here. Uh, I went online uh, and got a couple of ideas from people that are smarter than I am about this. And what they said was to jumper the two wires here that I've jumped there, the two biggest wires that come out of the EWS. One of them is uh, black with a yellow stripe and I, the other one is green I think with a brown stripe. Um, but don't get too hung up on that. They're the only two big wires. And what you do is you cut them on the back. Right here they've been cut. On the back, let me try to get a close up. Okay, right there's the green with a stripe, and here's the black with a stripe. You cut them, I have to cover this up so they wouldn't accidentally get shorted out with anything else. So, make believe these are covered up. And then you take them and you jumper them together. So that's what I've done so far, and I'm going to uh, always do this with the battery disconnected. I'm going to connect the battery up and I'm going to uh, give it a try. I've already um, pulled out the DME which is under the hood. Alright, this is the DME back here. It's on the passenger side right under the windshield wiper. There's a little uh, compartment that you take apart. Sorry, my battery's going dead. I gotta get some, new, I mean, my flashlight batteries are going on. I gotta get some new batteries in there. But anyway, I pulled and looked at the DME. I didn't open it up. Uh, but um, I'm gonna try this EWS bypass and let you know how it ha turns out. Okay, here we go. I've, uh, I didn't put everything back together yet because I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Um, and I still gotta cover up those two wires that I nipped. But I put the battery um, power back on, and here's my key. Key wasn't working before, so we're going to give it a try now. Ready? One, two. Ah, sweet sound. So what have we done? 
We bypassed the EWS uh, security system by um, cutting the two biggest wires on the yellow plug and uh, tape up the end of those wires, make sure you do that, and then you jump the wires, the other part of the wires that goes into the dash area actually uh, goes, I believe, to the DME. I could be wrong on that. I am not an expert on this. And this worked for this specific car. It's a 1995 with a build date of July of 95. It has a 413 DME silver Bosch 413 DME and it has EWS2. There's an EWS1, there's an EWS3. There's a lot to this guys and gals but um, this worked on this one car. Now if you got a question you can post it up to me but if it's about anything other than this car I might not be too much help on it. I'll give my, tri my best shot and I might be able to give you some resources that I can uh, refer you to. Anyway, uh, got to put it all back together now and uh, Froggy's happy. This took a few days and uh, a few trips to the dealer for a couple of small parts that I put on it and um, I don't have to pay the BMW dealer 500 to 2000 dollars to get this all put back uh, to original. And why would I not want to put back to the original? Because it's an overcomplicated system that's prone to failure. And I'll take my chances. The door lock still works. The alarm still works. Everything still works except the uh, ignition key. You you could have any chip in in the ignition key. The ignition key tumbler, the the um, actual little squiggly lines that they carve into the key would have to be correct, but it, if you had one that didn't have any chip in it at all, it wouldn't matter because the EWS is what reads that chip. Anyway, good to go. Glad you looked at this video. If you have any other questions, uh, post them up. If this helps you at all, give me a thumbs up. If you would like to uh, see more from Froggy, subscribe to my channel. Froggy out.